that people obviously handle stress in many different ways and tensions are high in a lot of households right now. What are your tips for dealing with a loved one's toxic energy, uh, coping methods, especially under the current circumstances where you are together 24 seven and their mood is negatively affecting everyone else in the house? That is not an easy one. Um, you know, first of all, let's, let's make sure that we all have <clears throat> uh, the same definition of stress. Uh, this, the definition of stress, and I learned this from a gentleman named Eckhart Tolle, and if you've never read or listened to his stuff, it is incredible, but he basically said, stress is the desire for things to be different than they currently are. Mm. Think about that for a second. That's what stress is. When you're sitting in traffic, you desire that there aren't cars in your way or in front of you. You know, when, when your spouse is, is, is doing something that annoys you, you're desiring that they aren't saying or doing that thing. So part of one of the easiest ways to lower the bar on stress is to simply just accept what is like, this is what's going on right now. You know, I understand that overall that, that COVID-19 and being quarantined and not going to school or not traveling or not going to, I understand the, the macro level that that is an incredibly stress inducing event or, or set of circumstances. But the moment you just go with the flow and just say, Hey, this is, this is what's going on. This is COVID-19. This is it. Then you'll, you'll let go of, of a lot of that stress. So first and foremost is to make yourself as, as impervious and resilient to stress as possible. I mean, I'm a human being, I'm fallible, but one of the areas I've made tremendous growth in over the last couple of years is in that ability that there's very few things these days that stress me out or get me frazzled or rattle me. I mean, it could be anything from two minutes before I step on stage, the microphone doesn't work. I don't let that rattle me. I just say, okay, there's no microphone. What's, you know, what's the next play? What can I do from here? So I think it starts with you and your ability <clears throat> to say, I'm not going to give someone else the power over how I feel or whether or not I'm stressed. Now, with that said, that is much easier said than done. I can't fathom being quarantined 24 seven with someone that is putting out that type of negative energy and, and toxic emotions and behaviors. So with that said, this is where I always believe let's not overcomplicate things. Let's actually go to the source and just say, and of course, you know, I don't know if this terminology is appropriate in, in your specific circumstance, but something to the effect of, look, I love you. I care about you. I've always got your back. However, there have been some behaviors or some things going on that are bothering me at present and I'm feeling this way and I'd love to be able to discuss them. You know, um, this is not a time to accuse someone of something. This is not a time to judge them uh, because, you know, you don't necessarily know what's going on in their head and, and, and what they've been experiencing, but it's okay for you to stand up for your own feelings and be able to say, you know, when you say this, it makes me feel this way. And I don't like feeling this way. So is this something we can discuss or talk about? Um, but I cannot stress enough. The key to that is not saying things like you make me this or you're doing this. Um, perfect example. Uh, my twin sons right now are in the other room uh, doing their online schooling. Uh, you can see what a great at-home proctor I am. They're just in there doing their thing and I'm here doing this interview. Uh, but my kids will often say something to the effect of, you know, Luke will say, you know, Jack is making me mad. And I'll say, whoa, hold up, buddy. Jack's not making you anything. You're choosing to be mad. Now, you're allowed to choose that response. And based on what he's doing, it's a pretty logical response. But no one makes you feel anything. You choose to feel these things. So you need to accept some ownership over that. So, so don't blame others or, or make others, don't hold other people responsible for how you're feeling or your stress level. That is 100% up to you. But if they're doing things that are not congruent with what you're trying to do, then I just think having open, honest discussions about them uh, can be very, very helpful. But you need to listen with an empathetic ear. You need to think that the reason they're behaving that way is because of the way that they're processing what's going on. You know, that the, their reaction to being pent up in quarantine 24 hours a day uh, is their current behavior. And, and there's reasons for that. So now let's just put all of our cards on the table and have an open discussion about it. Uh, and also realize that you can't force that. They might not want to have an open discussion. So don't force it. Say, okay, well, when you change your mind or if you change your mind, I'd love to be able to talk about it. So really kind of control what's going on on your side of the fence, 
be very open and neighborly to finding out what's going on on their side and see if you can come to something. But, but just remember when it comes to stress, you have the keys to the car. You absolutely do because you can choose to be, you can choose to want things to be different than they are and be stressed, or you can simply just let things be.